please don't clean your Bibles to Psalms 16. Is it okay if we minister the word before we minister to you? Is it okay if we minister the word before we minister to you? Let's just pray right now. Father, Lord, our desire, our intention, our longing, our heart's cry, Lord, it's not to impress people. It's not to make ourselves known. But we're not doing this for the multitudes. We're doing it for the audience of one. Tonight, we ask that you would invade this place. But whatever obstacles, whatever hindrances, whatever things that would oppose or compete, but right now we ask that you would remove those things. Open our eyes in a new and fresh way. We want to see you like never before. Or we want to make you our focal point. Lord, we give you the preeminence tonight. And Lord, we say, Lord, may you be peace with everything that transpires. Search us, Lord, and whatever it takes, Lord, bring us into that alignment that is needed in this day, this hour, for you to be able to trust us enough to release your power, your authority, your anointing, your power, your grace, to be able to move in the way you want to move, to disciple nations. Lord, we don't want to play games anymore. We're sick and tired of this plain church. Lord, we want you. And we will not settle for anything else. Be exalted to me. Receive the honor and the glory that is due unto you. Give a praise, Jerry. I was going to read the whole psalm, but I'll just read the first three verses because that, that's what I'll be sharing tonight. In psalm 16, verse 1, it says, Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. Verse 2, I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. And in verse 3, I say, the people, the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. In this whole psalm, basically it is the psalm of David, and he was so confident in Yahweh. He was so confident that Yahweh would preserve him from any untimely death. And he would grant unto him full, rich life for the ones that were chosen by God. And that he would not permit his low, loyal ones to be overcome by calamity and death. <coughs> Especially in this day, this hour. A lot of people, I don't know if you've heard in their sessions, they've, they've seen tsunamis as high as the condominiums in Rojas hitting Manila. Experts are saying that it is it, there's an impending earthquake that's supposed to hit the Philippines. And we know what's happening around us. I mean, even the weather patterns are so crazy now. And this psalm really speaks to that situation. And even with China, Bishop Chiu 
great about it. They're just waiting to pounce on us. And the word of the Lord is important tonight because we need to understand where we are and what we're doing has to be in alignment with what God is saying and doing or else God's protection will be withdrawn. God will dry up our provision and God will no longer judge the enemies of the land. Let me ask you, what? Can you remember a time where you were in God's presence and you were so impacted and changed you'll never be the same ever again? Can you? Or maybe during can you remember, what was the last time? Of course, we just had an incredible time in God's presence. Can you remember a specific time where the worship was so incredible? It was beyond description. Can you remember a time where you just collapsed under the presence of the Almighty God? See, a lot of us, we, we take for granted what it means to be in, in His presence. And tonight I want to talk just a few about a few things that, that really will remind us about His presence. As we read those few verses from Psalm 16, what we see here are some of the benefits that we receive from His presence. And the first thing that we receive is in verse 1. It says, Keep me safe, O God, for in You I take Refuge. Somebody say amen. amen. Keep me safe, O oh God, for in you I take refuge. See, there is safety in God's presence. Can you say amen? amen. And the two words that is being stressed in this first verse, the first word, keep me safe, literally means to put a hedge of protection around us. Can you show the pictures? You know what a hedge is? The value of the bushes. See the, the in the older time in the olden times. Can you show the pictures? During the ancient Israel, the vineyard owners would plant hedgerows around the vineyards to keep them safe from the enemy. And the picture here is that when you are in God's presence, God literally puts protection around you. You know, in, in, uh, in Africa, there's a tribe, they call them the Maasai. They are cattle herders. And you know in Africa, there are a lot of predators, especially, you know, big ones. And for them to protect their cattle, they would put these thorn bushes in a, in a, in a circle to, to keep the predators away at night. And that's the picture. Okay, these are the thorns, keep going. These are the Maasai's. And in the modern times, keep going, please. Anyways, um, basically, what 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 this is a, a picture of the hedgerow. But in modern times, what we use now are barbed wires and steel fencing. And I, I had a picture there of the supermax. You know what supermax is? It's one of those uh, maximum security uh, prisons. It's to keep people in. But the picture there is that when God's presence is around you, you are so protected that no enemy can penetrate or even attack you. Now, the only problem is, well, let's go to the second picture. The second picture is the word refuge. Everybody say refuge. Refuge. Okay? It's a place where you can flee or run to for protection. And I, will the picture come up? Yes, that's a fortress. Next one, please. That's another one. Imagine being held up. This is a modern one. Imagine being there when the enemy tries to attack you, they cannot enter you. This is a super match right there. And again, let me ask you, when you are in God's presence, who can harm you? Let me say that again. When you are in God's presence, who can harm you? 
See, a lot of us, we put so much emphasis on how powerful the enemy is. Satan is so powerful, you know, the witchcraft, the book. Let me tell you, he is on very limited time, and he has to ask permission from God to touch you. Did you know that? Yes. What we're referring to here is that when God, when we are in God's presence, God literally covers us with his swings and of protection. Yes. Now, one of my friends, he's, a, he's in the Air Force. He's one of the right-hand men to the commanding general of the Air Force. And he was telling me that when President I think it was Clinton visited, they took six months to prepare for his security measure. They worked with the Secret Service. And imagine, from point A to point B, he had police and military standing on both sides of the road. Number one. Number two, they, they fitted the presidential choppers with guns, with 50 caliber machine guns. And then, the, the the car that the president is riding, it's so, it's so incredibly protected that, it, I mean, you can't even do anything to it. And then they had escorts front and back, and they did not ride the usual, you know, uh, they went the opposite direction, meaning on the one way, all the way to, I think it was the, the Congress. And it was so protected, it was mind-boggling. And they said that they had stationed the aircraft carrier uh, the southern Luzon and the northern Luzon, and even the air was all completely covered. But do you know what? As incredible as that protection is, that's nothing compared to God's protection for us. Amen. See, the issue is it's not the environment. The issue is not about who your enemy is. The issue is who is with you. If President Obama was with you and you go to the scariest places in the Philippines, would you still be afraid? <laughs> yes. Of course not. If President Pina was with you with all his PhD around him, there's nothing to fear. That's, but imagine God promised that wherever you go, I will, there, I will be there with you. Amen. Wherever we go, God is there with us. You know, many of you already, this is fact, uh, fact and part of history, the tsunami that basically the earthquake that hit Japan, 9 point, what was it? 9.8? Oh, 8.9, what was it? 9.1? Basta malakas, iba? And they were saying, uh, first of all, you have to understand, Japan is the most prepared nation in the whole world. They're number one in terms of preparing for disasters, whether tsunamis or earthquakes. Did you know that? Yes. They even do monthly drills and rehearsals. They spend millions and millions of dollars to prepare the country. They're very serious about preparing for it. Now, what happened when the earthquake hit and tsunami in Japan? They couldn't do anything. And then, when the tsunami hit, a reporter from CNN said, oh no, in six hours, that the tsunami 10 meters high is going to hit the Philippines. And they said the Philippines is the worst equipped in terms of preparing for natural disasters. Did you know that? Yes. They were saying, oh no, it's going to be, I mean, they were really freaking out. And so, Bishop Dan Belias, I remember he was, uh, like, went to shop when he was speaking at, in the global. He said, you know, he basically called and, and informed all the intercessors and they began to pray. And guess what happened? When the tsunami hit, it was no longer 10 meters, it was only 0.6. And nothing happened. God's protection is complete. 
and this is something that we need to understand that there's a lot of things, a lot of people have seen vision, a lot, a lot of warnings that are going forth, and, and the question is, are we ready to align ourselves with what God is doing in our nation so that we can ask God, God's presence, to cover and protect our nation? Are we ready? In God's presence, there is safety. See, in Psalms 9, verse 9 and 10, it says, The Lord will, will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. Come on. Amen. Give, give, give God a big round of applause right now. Come on. The best place to be, the safest place to be, anywhere in the whole world is to be in God's presence. Secondly, come on, let's give God another big round of applause. Come on. In verse two, not only is God's presence gives safety. In verse two, he says, "I said it to the Lord, You are my Lord. Apart from You, I have no good thing." Do you believe that? Yes, right. Not only safety, but God gives satisfaction. That's right. Satisfaction. Nothing good exists outside of God's presence. Can I say that? Yes. In the message translation of the same verse, I say, I say to God, be my Lord, without you nothing makes sense. In the New Living Translation, I said, I said to the Lord, you are my master. All the good things I have are from you. Let me ask you, what is your feelings? What is your thoughts? What is your motivation? When you think about spending your time with God, are you so excited? Is there great anticipation or do you just have a lot now? When you are thinking in this service, what came to your mind? Oh no. But I got a worship, oh no, my word. Or were you so excited that you couldn't wait to get to get here to this place? Last week I ministered to some people. And two weeks ago, what? What did I do? I ministered a lot, but what's that? And these people have been Christians for a long time. They've known of the word. They've been studying the word and they can quote the word. But when I began to pray for some of these people, they began to feel an encounter with God like they've never felt before. And they, they couldn't explain it. They couldn't, they couldn't even describe it. It was so special, it was so strong. It made such an impact in their lives. Let me ask you, when you think of the Lord and your experience with Him in His presence, what can you compare to the presence of God? What would you be willing to give up for the presence of God. Let me put it in another word. What would you be willing to pay to have God's presence? Let me guide you. See, some of us, we were so accustomed to, you know, we've been doing this for so long, oh no, we're going to do it again. And sometimes we forget that the Word of God says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Once you feel, once you experience His presence, you will be ruined. Because nothing else can ever compare with it. Amen. You know, I've been married for a few years. It'll be 20 years in July. 
And the woman I married is, grew up in Samar. And I remember when I was engaged to her, I was in the States for three months. And during this time, this was in 1991, the whole city of Kalbayu had only one telephone line. You better say one. So if you waited at the PLTD office or you had a private telephone in your house, you all had to go through one line, incoming and outgoing. And I remember that time where, you know, I wanted to talk to her and it was like, you know, you know how, I don't know, most of you are singles here, it looks like, you know. And people have this question, if, if they are compatible, they should get married, you know. And, and the question is, you know, do you think you can live with this woman for the rest of your life? And, and, and that's the wrong question. The question should be, you know, that I cannot live without her. And I remember waiting and waiting, and it's like, you know, I was thinking, you know, Every waking moment, every waking second, all I could think about was this, this person. I love you more. God's thoughts are an intention about you is so much greater than what I just described. Yes. The Bible says that if you were to count the thoughts of God as concerning you, they would outnumber the grain of sand in the seashore. Yeah. Come on! Yeah. You know, I've tried many things. You know, I ride a big bike. Somebody let me borrow a BMW and you know, I like speed. You know, I like competing with guns. I train the top dogs. I used to compete in martial arts. I used to try to do all these things and trying to meet something. But let me say this. There's nothing like being in the presence of God. out of his ears <laughs> and I looked in his eyes and I saw his mind and the satisfaction was not there I've, I've known people that are so famous you know I prayed for what a household name last Saturday I mean there were so, so many people wanting to, to get near him and, and the security was so tight and I looked into his life but nothing against him and I, I realized you know what that satisfaction that I get in God's presence doesn't even compare to this popularity. You know, I met I my close friend. He's at the only time, you know, he's, he's one of the few people in the whole world that has four medical specialty at one time. In the Ganyapanang Dalawa. A smart, smart person, doctor. With all the attainment, with all the accomplishment, I look in, into his life and I said, you know what? Still the study we come close to what we find in God's presence. Come on, people. Do you realize, do you understand what it means that God has granted us full access to his presence? And he's saying, come to me. I want to expose, I want to reveal, I want to touch you like them before. Yes. What price would you be willing to pay for his presence? Not only safety, satisfaction in verse 3. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. Here it speaks of splendid friends. Talking about the saints. Talking about the people of God. In the message Bible, it says, and these God's chosen lives all around, what splendid friends they make. Sabi mo sa pati mo, splendid ka talaga. There's joy that comes from being in God's, the presence of God's people. 
you know that? Do you like the person next to you? Psalms 22, 122 verse 1 is, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. When I'm with people like you, I'm provoked. I invited some friends, they're they in a group called their businessmen, uh, young professionals, uh, intercessors, uh, mga dignified older people, <laughs> accomplished people. But when I'm around them, I am inspired, I am challenged, I am provoked with God's deposit in their lives. Yes, I love to spend time in God's presence by myself. But iba talaga. And I need God's people. Come on. Did you know that you are a carrier of God's presence? Your experience and exposure, you have a deposit. You have a revelation that no one else has. And as I engage, and as I relate and, and have a relationship with you, I'm able to partake of that. That's why when Bishop Chilo invited me to come, I, I, I've been in the Manila for four days already, and I said, uh, 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 yes. But my wife said, you have to go home first. So I flew to Tapoba last Saturday, and I flew back this Monday just to be with you. Because I want to be a place with a passion for God. Yes. See, each one of us, Ephesians talks about how we have a part to play. My part is not. 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 My part Guys, seriously, there is a revelation, there is an impartation, there's something in you that you need to give to others. And imagine, imagine this. See, our joy hinges on who God is and what He wants to do in our lives, in our midst today. I am part of the Ministerial Fellowship. Well, actually, I'm the president of the Ministerial Fellowship in our city. And the intercessors of the Philippines, because it was spoken to one of the major prophets that came, said, if you establish three houses of prayer in the Philippines, I will protect the nation from calamities. Come on. In the recent National Prayer Gathering last May, Prophet Chuck Pierce and among other people saying that the Philippines has been handpicked and chosen by God to be the spiritual Israel for Asia. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. You know what they challenge? Sabi ng Prophet that God has been giving us, this was through Bishop Hammond 20 years ago, 20 years ago, we were under that ministry, we were training in the prophetic, we were activating people 20 years ago. And the prophet Hammond said, you have 20 years to prepare. Did you know that 20 years is this year? We're not ready for it yet. But the good thing is, the people, the good thing, God sent another prophet and said, I'm giving you a three year extension to get ready. Prophet my Lord, because God wants to use the Philippines to disciple Asia. Come on! The prophet said, the servant of God said, you are now about to enter a fork in the road, a split, a Y. If you go the right direction, 
my blessings, my protection, resources, all this will be yours. But if you take the wrong turn, just like God would punish Israel, God will punish the Philippines. And the bird of prey, the predatory bird, the prophet is saying, that's China waiting. And so what I'm saying here, that yes, God has brought us into a new season. And he's saying that this end time revival will be such a revival. He did not do that to that then. Now after a while, Umihina. He says, this revival will be sustained. Amen. Come on. Amen. And he said, this revival is going to be so incredible. Grabe yung miracles. Grabe yung, you know, raising the dead. I mean, speaking to earthquakes and tsunamis. But this is the challenge. God is saying that we need, see, in this season, God is accelerating everything. He is escalating everything. Sovereign minister of God. And God says that as He elevates the standard, the question now is, is our lives aligned to the purposes of God? We're not talking about just doing our own thing, building our own business, building our own churches. God is asking, is it aligned to my purpose for the nation? Because if it is, then I will pour out my protection. There will be safety. Then I will pour out my presence and you will feel my satisfaction. Then I will pour out and I'm going to bless my people like never before. Come on, give them praise, church. I want to quote this. It says, Ito yung key natin. The continual presence of God is the key to everything for the follower of Jesus Christ. It's the key. What we're wanting here, imagine getting a group of people together, and say, let's just get together. I'm doing nothing. Let's go to God. Let's experience God and like never before. What are you willing to do to get more of His presence? Because in His presence, God will begin to release His power. In His presence, God will begin to release His authority. God will begin to release His breakthroughs. In His presence, everything will be released. Come on. <laughs> Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. God has promised that if you gather, I will be there in your midst. How far are you willing to pursue Him? How much passion are we allowing God to be released this time? But let me let me begin to wind down. You guys remember Joseph? Joseph the dreamer? Joseph was thrown into prison. He was he was brought into a foreign land. But the Bible says that in everything he did, he had success and blessings. Allah <laughs> me Because the presence of God was with him.
lot of us were thinking in terms of, yes, I need to reach out to a person. Yes, I need to go evangelize somebody. Yes, I need to go to disciple somebody. And God says, no. I want you to disciple nations. God wants to use each and every one of you to turn this world upside down for His glory. Do you believe that? Just think about it for a moment. Initially, He only had 12 men. And then later on, 70. Could it be that there's enough people in this room empowered by the presence of God to turn the nations upside down for the glory and honor of God? Do you believe that? The message of the Lord for us tonight is really a message that should provoke us, that should challenge us, that should wake us up. See, the enemy wants us to be worried about all these things. The enemy wants us to be distracted. The enemy wants us to be preoccupied. But God says, no. Focus on me. If you allow my presence, if you are in the center of my presence, then I can do what I want to do in your midst. No matter what. Let me give you one, one last example before I, I pray. There's been so many things that has happened in our city since we started establishing the 24-7. 